Welcome to this video on some old Olympic sites here in Sarajevo, Bosnia. And starting with probably the most known or most seen and documented site, and I believe this to be the actual starting or launching point for the bobsleds on this bobsled track that you see behind me, now abandoned and crumbling. And we will walk down there and see if we can find some more interesting sites to look at along this uh, abandoned Olympic structure. Let's take a look, see what we can find, and then later we're going to look at some stuff that's maybe a little less known, less documented. It looks here like they would have had two ways for the bobsleds to enter into the main track. You can see a little bit narrower one over there and then the wider one over here. And we're now entering the first turn and of course these turns are heavily banked. So if you've ever watched Olympic bobsledding, especially once they get farther down, they'll be kind of riding up on the walls, attempting not to tip over. It's one of those sports that you really have to live on the edge, right on the verge of catastrophe. So here's the second turn. Walls are getting a little higher now. So we're off. That's the departure area of the uh, cable car that takes us up to the bobsled area. Already quite a nice view of Sarajevo down below. on a semi-foggy semi day. I can see some kind of castle fortress on the hill over there. So here comes a green cable car on its way down. Let's see if we can get a picture of that passing by as we ascend the heights here through the uh, the smoke and fog. Oh, they even have a cable car at the time. Look at that. So that would have been a cable car from back in the 84 era. So this is what the inside of the original Olympic cable cars looked like, sitting inside of a very yellow little car here. So perhaps four people might have fit in here and definitely just bare metal. Not much to it, so let's see what the outside looks like. That is today known as the Hotel Holiday. And it was built for the Olympics, originally branded as the Holiday Inn Hotel, so the same name as the American hotel chain. And that was uh, someplace where they housed people who actually worked for the Olympics, the Olympic Committee type people, so not so much for the athletes or the coaches, but it was a really high style hotel at that time. And after the Olympics, for the remainder of the country of Yugoslavia's existence, it continued to be the premier hotel here in Sarajevo. Now once that country started to break up and the war broke out in and around Sarajevo, that hotel became a place where people in the media would stay to cover all of the unfortunate events of the uh, war here around Sarajevo. And the hotel itself was damaged during the war, but has since been remodeled and uh, back to its original form, used today as a hotel. And so let me see if I can just sneak in there momentarily and get a few glimpses of the lobby, which is said to be 
sort of like bringing the outdoors inside. I found another somewhat out of the way Olympic site to show you here, and that is at the Skenderija Center. I hope I pronounced that okay. And what you're seeing is a guy by the name of Mirza Delabasic. Like a lot of the people here, he was very tall, so basketball came naturally to him. Unfortunately, he had a bit of a tragic end, as best I could tell, after his basketball career descended into a lot of drinking and smoking and died in his mid to late 70s. So what we have behind that is the main Olympic hall here at the center, at the Skenderija Center. That was actually built in 1969 and the man himself, Tito, the longtime leader of Yugoslavia, was here on this site to dedicate that building and it was significantly renovated for the 84 Olympics when it hosted some events such as some of the hockey games were held in that building back there. So, I believe some of the architecture buffs believe that uh, this is a very good example of Yugoslav architecture. You can see how the wings kind of jut up on both sides. Hopefully you can see that amongst the fog and smoke. And so, it's kind of up in the air right now, the future of that building, and you can decide for yourself whether that should be replaced by something new or whether it should be preserved for future generations. So I hope that you enjoyed a look at some of the more out-of-the-way sites, perhaps, in Sarajevo Olympic history. And I want to end by showing you a little souvenir that I got. And it was very nice of someone from Bosnia to purchase this for me when I didn't have enough of the local money. And I offered to give them some euros for some local money. They said no. This is something that uh, we're going to buy for you. It's a gift from Sarajevo. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. The people of Sarajevo are very hospitable and uh, you should come see this for yourself. So until our next adventure, goodbye from Sarajevo.